Well, it used to be in agriculture, you know, it was all hands-on. You, you um, drove the tractors, you, you manually changed things, but now computers have taken a lot of the tedious stuff out. Jeff Sandburn is a corn, wheat, and soybean farmer in Portland, Michigan. And his job has changed a lot over the years as innovation in agricultural technology has increased at a breakneck pace. And while not all farmers are eager to adopt this new technology, Jeff is. Farming still is farming. We want to do the best we can with, with every year we get to farm. And most farmers, you know, I'm going to get maybe 50 tries at this, 50 years of farming. And I only get 50 times to get it right. So I want to keep doing a better job every year and improving what I'm doing. But it's not just personal pride motivating Jeff. The stakes are much higher when it comes to farming. We only have so much land that can grow crops, productive crops. And this planet continues to have more people on it. So we have to do a better job on the land we have and, and get more out of the resources we put in, get higher yields to feed more people. Unfortunately, pressure to increase food production can have a negative impact on the environment. Overfertilization and imprecise irrigation have created insecurities in our Great Lakes water supply, including harmful algal blooms. I think farmers all want to do the best of the environment. They depend on the environment. Their, their field is part of the environment. The bottom line for most farmers, though, is, is what does it cost? You want to produce the most corn, soybeans, potatoes, you can for the least cost and, and still maintain the productivity of your, of your soil. But what if there was a way to increase crop yield and farmers' profitability while decreasing over-fertilization and water waste? At Michigan State University, a team of researchers is piloting a project that will do just that. The drone, uh, we call it the giant mozzies because it's like a mozzies, a nickname for mosquitoes in Australia. You know, I used to work in Australia. Um, it's very, uh, it sounds like a mosquito, but I use it to um, fly over farmer's field and detect changes in uh, plant performances. Bruno Basso, an Italian native, has relocated to America's heartland to pilot a new research project using unmanned aerial vehicles otherwise known as drones. When a drone flies like this specific type, flies over a field, it detects information about reflectance of light uh, from the plant. So you are able to get a, a, you know, an information for a very large area at a fine scale. Commercial drones have been used by farmers for years to provide a bird's eye view of their crops, and it's estimated that 90% of all drone use by the year 2025 will be in agriculture. But Bruno's drone does much more than take pretty pictures from above. This drone is able to survey large sections of land down to the millimeter, generating detailed maps which lend farmers valuable insight into their fields. Everything that I do in a field costs me money whether it's the seed I buy, the fertilizer I use, the chemicals that are applied. If I can get the most efficient use out of that resource, whether it's seed, fertilizer, which fertilizer is very energy intensive, I want to grow the most crop I can out of that given unit of fertilizer. But increasing the amount of fertilizer does not necessarily mean a farmer will see an increase in the amount of crops he is able to produce. And for Bruno, a uniform application of fertilizer is simply a waste. So the uniform application that normally a farmer does, by definition, he overestimates this input in one area and he underestimates inputs in the other area. And so that's the important. One size fits all is not the case in agriculture because there is a lot of variability. So in the end, what does the drone do? Tells us about that variability. Understanding field variability is one part of the puzzle, but for all that information to be useful, a farmer has to know what practical measures to take. That's why Bruno is developing easy-to-use software that not only breaks the information down, it actually creates a predictive model that allows a farmer to digitally test out a change in their farming practices without any risk to their yield. You can simulate your field, the farmer's field, um, for the last 20 years of weather that has occurred, that is available, and you compare two nitrogen treatments, uh, 100 kilograms versus 200 kilograms or more, and you basically, based on the model, which is 
highly reliable. You basically learn that 80% of the time, 100 kilograms may give you the same response as 200 kilograms, or maybe 100% of the time. So if you get that kind of confidence, why use it 200? By not using excess fertilizers, we, don't ha we have less runoff, and the runoff goes into the lakes and streams, and then we have uh, algal blooms, which cause, which cause eutrophication, and you, get, you, know, you kill fish. And you also, by having excess fertilizer, you, the bacteria in the soil turn these fertilizers into greenhouse gases. So by using the right amount of fertilizer so you can maximize plant growth, but not too much so you get runoff, you can save the environment and produce healthy and, and efficient crops. The implications of Bruno's research are clear. Smart advancements in agricultural technology could be the key to increasing farmers' profitability, decreasing the environmental impact, and increasing food production to support an ever-growing global population. And farmers like Jeff, they're ready to take flight.